All right, what's going on, my friends? We're on our way to our customer pickup. We'll see if we got a reaction or ride along or something in between. Should be just up here. Hey, man, I just want to ask. I love this car so much. Oh, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> it's one of my dream cars, man. Oh, shit. Hell, yeah. Plus, you works. got a yoke in the Model 3. Oh, sure man. do. Yeah, the second these uh, became available after market, when I saw Dirty Tesla with it, mm -hmm. uh, I was like, oh man, uh, I used his discount code and I got it. Mine is also fully autonomous. Really? It's got the uh, version 12 FSD supervised now. It used to be called Beta. But it should do this whole trip on its own. Oh man. <laughs> oh man. One day I'm going to get it, Tesla, man. I, I really love it. You totally can. They're a lot more attainable now. I mean, hell, this one, uh, so this is a 2020. I got it new for about 38, mm -hmm. but you can get um, 2020s, 2018s, or, or 2019s for between like 10 and 20,000, like around like 14, 15,000 used. Mm -hmm. um, they might be a little worse for wear depending on where you get it from, but still fantastic cars. This doesn't, this still normally has 200,000 miles on it. Is, <laughs> um, is there any charges? like in the area in Lake Will or wherever, like where are you from? So Lake Wills is a little bit of a dead zone. Um, to answer your question, I was born and raised in Florida, but I spent the last 11 years living in California with the, since I was in the military. Mm -hmm. And I, I drove this thing around all over San Diego, LA, everywhere in uh, California where, you know, chargers are robust. Out here, they're not bad. And what I actually really love out here is they're at freaking Wawa gas stations. And those are amazing places. The sandwiches, the restrooms, like it's perfect. Uh, but bit of a, well, I'm actually not too bad because right? we got some chargers here in Winter Haven. Orlando's loaded, of course. All these are the version three superchargers. Uh, even these gray ones, these are just the ones closer to us. And Florida is stacked, man. It's uh, There are some areas where it's a little bit less, but there's always a charger within range to get to and you fill up in like 25, 30 minutes. Um, oh man, I'm telling you, I was fanning out when I saw it. <laughs> Model 3 in, uh, on Lyft. I'm telling you, man. <clears throat> oh, that's awesome. I love the excitement. It's funny because there is definitely a difference in giving people rides out here in a Tesla than California. Because really? it's like, these things are like Toyota Corollas out there. Mm -hmm. They're everywhere. Um, I'm actually surprised how many Cybertrucks I've seen. I've seen a few Cybertrucks here and I was fanning out. Yep, yeah. me too. <laughs> man, I love I I love Tesla so much. Actually, when I graduated, hold on. When I graduated, my dad knows I love uh, Tesla so much. He rented out a Tesla for me. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> he drive. Oh, and I bet he had a blast. Did he get to drive it? He drove it, yeah, but he didn't like it. He, he didn't like it as much as I did. Oh, okay. Because usually once you get someone's butt in the seat and they can feel the power and the experience, usually yes. that'll sell them. And then they kind of ask all the other questions like chargers and, and uh, yeah. range, like the things that people are a little bit more worried about, which honestly, in my experience, less than a week with the car, all of your concerns go away. Really? It's it's so easy to live with. And, and now, one of the big motivating factors of moving back here, oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> hell yeah. That's a hell of a graduation present. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and it feels really good to live here now again, because now I actually have a house and I can charge at home. And that is a massive quality of life improvement. Like my wife hasn't had to supercharge since we got here in the start of August, because we just plug in in a regular outlet at home in the garage. And you actually get a surprising amount of energy. I, I got home yesterday from being done working between like 40 and 50%. That's a new Model 3. Oh, I love the new Model 3s. Yeah, They're the gorgeous. Model 3s, oh, I love them, man. That was what I was gonna get before I had to move from California. So I chose a house over the car, unfortunately, had my priorities, you know. But I definitely want the new Model 3. I want Cybertruck too. I want a lot of things. It's like, oh, yeah. Cybertruck's just a little too expensive. What do you, what do you think about, um, have you seen the video of the Cybertruck frame breaking? <clears throat> like, what do you think about that? Um, what, like with Whistling Diesel? Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't really think too much of it because, like, he is intending to do what he can to destroy the product, the stress test. Um, you can find just as many videos of the Cybertruck out pulling 2500 series trucks and tractor pull contests. Uh, it's an incredibly strong and robust product, but there is something important to realize, which is that it's the first ever of its design. And there are gonna oh, be teething it's issues. Right? 
Well, it's not even just that, but nothing's been built like Cybertruck because it's a full stainless steel exoskeleton. It's uh, Tesla had to invent manufacturing techniques to make it, like with air blade technology to bend the metal because it's too strong to stamp. That's why you don't get the fancy curves that you see on other vehicles because that, that stainless steel is too strong. It'll break those stamping presses. So Tesla essentially reinvented the truck literally from the ground up, which is why it looks like that. Cause they're like, all right, what does a truck gotta do? We're gonna go to first principles thinking, the best process is no process. Instead of doing what we've done for a hundred years, let's redesign it. So they went with function over form, which is why it does not look pretty. I think it looks badass personally, mm -hmm. but it's not an aesthetically appealing vehicle like you know the other Tesla lineup. And due to all these new things, including the 48 volt architecture, the steer by wire system where there's no actual physical link between your steering wheel and the wheels mm -hmm. and a myriad of other things that I, I can't even spit off the top of my brain because there's so much that went into this truck. That's all brand new and never been done before. So you're going to have teething issues. You're going to have learning process where it's like, okay, so this broke or this isn't working quite right. So let's change it. And Tesla's very quick, just like SpaceX, like with the way they send up Starship, blow it up, rebuild it, figure out how to fix it. They do the same thing at Tesla. So the first trucks, kind of like with the steering pedal recall mm -hmm. and any little issue that does pop up, that should be expected because it is, again, the first of its kind and it'll get stronger and better built over time. Yeah. Kind of like if you think back to the first Model 3s, the build quality was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> it was not good. Yeah. Now you look at the new Model 3 and it is like, the pinnacle of beauty in gonna, manufacturing. Are you gonna get the um, the 2020? Is it the 2025 um, Model Y that they're making? We're waiting for that for my wife. <laughs> One of the things we've been unfortunate with is we took delivery of our Model Y in the Q4 rush, the first year it came out, and our Model Y has been a problem child. This car has been great. You know, 200,000 miles. It's it's been basically a unicorn. I did kill the battery from how much I drive and I had to replace it. But aside from that, the car itself has been good. Our Model Ys had issues with the hatch being misaligned, our media control unit's not working right, so the Bluetooth's always resetting and not working. Did you get this car used? No, we got them both brand new. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's just that with the Tesla, kind of like with Cybertruck now, or sorry, with the Model Y rather, kind of like Cybertruck, it was the first year of its production. Kind of like the old first Model 3s, and there's always gonna be that sort of teething process because they gotta work out the kinks. and. The new Model Y, I think, is going to be kind of like the Model 3 in the sense that it's like perfection in as close as you can get to it as a human-made product for that car. So like the Model Y Juniper, as it's codenamed, is probably going to be, because Model Y is already the best-selling, the Juniper edition is just going to raise that bar even higher. Yeah. And we're, yeah, my, my wife is definitely interested in it. She actually really likes her Rivians too, but Rivian. she hates the pig nose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing that stops her from wanting a Rivian. Uh, I got to ask questions before, uh, before I get home. Um, I wanted to ask, um, if you don't mind me asking. Oh yeah, ask I away. Had, I love it. Uh, I've kind of under the impression that owning a Tesla is kind of expensive and for the rich. Like, if you don't mind me asking, what do you do for a living? Like, this is it, brother. This is, this is what you do? Yeah. Yeah. So that's actually what got me into the Tesla world. Uh, so back in 2019, I started messing with Uber and Lyft outside of the military because uh, I was going to school and I'm a working type. Like I can't just sit at home. I got to do something or I'll go stir crazy. So I got into the Uber and Lyft world because I love to drive. And then uh, kind of randomly when I was taking back a rental car for my wife, I saw a Model S in an enterprise parking lot and I kind of got my gears turning like, hmm, I wonder if I could rent a Tesla to do this. But at the time, there really wasn't any program for it. You know, the Hertz thing hadn't happened yet. And Enterprise was like treating it like a Lamborghini. It was ridiculous. For this 2017 Model Y, uh, or 2016 Model S, they were wanting like three grand down and like a thousand a week. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, I can't do that. That's insane. So I found another dude that rented out Teslas. And uh, so at the time, to kind of backtrack, I was renting a little Kia Soul from um, Fair, which is a partnership with Uber for people who don't have cars they can use. So you can actually like lease a car, which you can do that now with Teslas too, but it's really expensive. It's like 400 a week. But my gas plus rental was about 500. So I told uh, a gentleman in, in San Diego, I was like, hey, I will give you 500 a week if you let me use that Model S uh, in a, like a, not a permanent status, but like it stays with me instead of it being like a rental that I return. 
and he jumped on it. So, cause that's a, that's a constant stream of revenue for him. And for the same price of me renting a little Kia, I was in a Model S. So I was, I was static. But still, that's, if you do the math, that's $2,000 a month in rental fees. And I was like, dude, if I can just get approved for a Tesla and have a, like a $600 car payment, game over. Like the, the savings in gas alone with this much driving is like $1,500 a month. So I am saving enough money in gas to afford like two and a half Teslas. So like those numbers made so much sense that I told my wife, uh, we kind of executed a plan, like what, I'm gonna sell my Mini Cooper, we're gonna sell her Nissan, you know, get our credit in line and attempt to get a Model 3 and then later that year a Model Y. At the time, this car was listed at 38,000, brand new, for the, for the base Model 3. And I think that's still about the price for a base Model 3, is about 38, 39, except now, I don't, okay, so this part's tricky, but the tax credit, I don't think is on the base Model 3, but it is on the long range and the performance, if, if I'm getting that right, which is $7,500 off the price, which is really cool. But anyway, that aside, uh, with a credit score just over 650 points, I managed to get approved for a $40,000 loan through USAA and was able to get this car. Um, by far the most expensive car I had ever attempted to get, because again, regular dude, straight out of the military, blue collar, like never came into money or anything. All I had was the GI money from going to college after the Navy and driving for Uber and Lyft. And then once I started doing that and, and doing it in 2020, 2021 during the pandemic was a gold mine for drivers because like everyone stopped driving. So those of us who were doing this job were making like $80 an hour because there were so many people that needed rides. So by the end of the year, we had saved up enough to get my wife's Model Y. So we went from having like an old beat up used Nissan and uh, a 2013 little two door Mini Cooper that I had and a beat up Chevy to a two Tesla household. And it felt weird as hell. Like we, we felt super bougie and kind of strange and like surreal. We're like, what the heck? But I mean, yeah, the, the Model 3 and Model Y, when you factor in what you're not paying, when you're looking at true costs, like there's no more oil changes on top of gas or engine or transmission maintenance, none of that. So you really just have charging, which at a supercharger, you're filling up on average from like 12 to $15 and a Model Y, maybe a little closer to 20 bucks. And then at home, it barely hits your electric bill. My, my electric bill is around $200 a month, even with charging both cars. So yeah, if you put a plan together and figure out your own finances and, and, and the biggest thing for me and, and for a lot of folks will be getting approved for the loan, uh, depending on your credit history, your credit worthiness, and like not just how high your credit score is, but how much history you have. Like that was all something that I had to build through uh, my time in the military and when I got out. Do you think it's a good idea to, um, to get used or new? I mean, right now the used market for the Teslas is fantastic. Um, especially if you make sure you get one from a reputable place that has its uh, warranty still, because there's manufacturer warranty on your battery and your powertrain. So even if the car is over 40,000 miles for like the 2020s, or I should say for the standard Teslas like mine, it's an eight year, 100,000 mile warranty on your battery and motors, which is great. And on the long range of performance, it's eight year, 120,000 mile, I believe. And you can get a used Model 3 for, I've seen as low as 14,000. Um, mine would probably resell for about 10 to 12 because I have almost 200,000 miles on it. But the mileage on the car isn't as impactful as it would be on a gas car because it's, it's electric. You don't have the engine and transmission again. So there's not as much to be worried about. Interior quality might be a thing. Like I use mine a lot and it's, it's a little weathered here. I can get a steam cleaner and kind of refresh this a bit. And I have a little divot where my elbow sits in the, in the door rest. But that's like the extent. I've had over 15,000 people in this car and this is the original interior just to show you how durable it is. So like, I can definitely confidently stand behind going used. Uh, you might not have the, the coolest new thing. You'll be kind of like me with the flip up doors instead of the nice slide ones and stuff. But honestly, like that's so small in comparison and getting your foot in door with having a Tesla you want. I don't really know uh, the, the price ranges of the used Model Ys. I think that they still retain a bit of a higher value than the three because the three kind of got hit since the new Model 3 came out. So the first gen Model 3 is kind of got smacked in the face a little bit. But yeah, I mean, all that's to say that I'd, I'd be confident with used as long as it's not from some shady place that might have messed with it or something. You would want to make sure you, you go somewhere reputable because there are some rare cases 
I've heard where somebody had tampered with a car and like so it can't be used on the supercharger network anymore like Tesla wouldn't allow it but I haven't heard of that in a long long time so that might be only under like a salvage condition or something okay it was like a good year to get like you said this one's a 2020 right? this is a 2020 I would look at uh, 2020 and up I mean uh, there's a lot of really good looking 2019s um 2021 and on will get you like most of the things that I don't have oh, that's interesting it's getting in the wrong lane because we need to go left yeah. <laughs> it should fix itself it just might take a second um but I think like it was the end of the year 2020 when they got the update with like the heated steering for the long range and the sliding door versus the pop-up door and the power trunk. Um, still not a power frunk, which is okay. But just little interior changes and maybe some trim change, but the function of the car itself is still fantastic. It's it's the software is incredible and it updates over time. So you're gonna have the most up-to-date software. Do you still get heated steering with the yoke, like third party? No, uh, if you if your car has heated steering in it. Uh, which I don't so I know that standard <coughs> sorry standard missed out on a few things that long range performance got like the uh, premium sound and sorry. I think the uh, sorry to cut you off but no. the, the you see that H uh, street turn yeah that one's um, a dirt road that's oh, okay. for trucks gotcha so thanks for that the next one here I think I can actually yeah, select that one right there that's like the road everybody uses. Oh, dope, man. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good catch. I'm paying attention. I'm just changing the navigation. It's yelling at me. <laughs> oh, yeah, and with any of them, too, you should be able to subscribe to FSD if you want. Like, I didn't buy it because that's too expensive for me. Again, regular guy. So at the time, $12,000 for FSD wasn't possible. I pay 100 a month to rent it through a subscription model, which is pretty great. I just love these cars. I was so fanning out when I ordered the Lyft and I seen Tesla. Oh man. Thank you so much, man. No, nah, it was a blast nerding out with you, man. <laughs> Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Uh, Hell yeah, man. That was fun. That was that was the most talkative and most interactive customer I've had. Uh, if you're seeing this video, man, shout out to you. That was a great conversation. I, I really hope that uh, you're able to get your hands on a Tesla, whether it's used or new, you can totally do it. I mean, these things are finally in a realm of being attainable for the average person, which is one of the reasons I have one, because like, again, I am not anyone special with any kind of money. Um, I'm a pretty regular dude who just made some good choices and was fortunate that things lined up properly. and. Uh, and if you're watching it, feel free to check out the comments too. There might be a lot of great comments that are giving advice and, and things that I've missed. The community around uh, my channel and, and Tesla in general is, is really great, really informative and helpful. And that was a lot of fun. And FSD totally killed that trip. So I am looking forward to getting the next customer. This is by far uh, the best customer I've had in Florida yet to just be geeking out about Tesla, which is great. Um, I look forward to getting more. I'm going to get on to the next customer out here in Lake Wales and see what kind of stuff we get into. But thanks for tuning in everybody, and y'all take care.